Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel, along with Mike, getting together for a talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. As we've been talking about, this never gets old. This gets more and more exciting as as time goes on, at least for you and I, Cap. And uh, it's been a privilege and a joy to share this good news with people every week here on the Growing in Grace podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing it with a friend, of course. And you can point people over to growingingrace.org to find all of our past podcasts there. We talked for several weeks, actually five months, a series that we loved doing, Why Jesus Taught Two Covenants. Uh, We talked about why Jesus taught Old Covenant talk, and he taught New Covenant talk. He did uh, both, but each for a reason. And now that we've gotten through that series, we decided we want to move on to talking about the New Covenant. You'll find a lot about the New Covenant in the book of Hebrews, so you can uh, be assured that we'll spend a lot of time there talking about this uh, new and better covenant. I'll get into the word better in a little bit here, too, but um, glad to have you along with me as usual, Cap. Better. (laughs) Better. (laughs) I know we've done that before, haven't we? Oh, probably. But even that par- doesn't parquet get old. margarine commercials. <laughs> for those who, for those youngsters out there who don't know, there was a, a tub of margarine that would open its lid and and pretend to be butter. <laughs> <laughs> butter. Anyway, if I think about it, I'll po- if I find one on YouTube, I'll post that along with the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so so here we are. Now the death of Jesus occurs. You know, he he leaves. He sends us the Holy Spirit. And we have a new covenant in place now. Up until that time, up until the death of Jesus, or shortly thereafter, there was uh, the first covenant in place, which was only meant for Israel. It was only meant for Jews. It wasn't meant for us Gentiles who were not born Jewish. But that covenant came to an end. And that's important to understand. And maybe we'll we'll get into a few scriptures on that. But the important thing to understand to start things off is that the covenant had to end. So there wasn't some sort of spiritual eclipse going on here where the the old covenant was still kind of hanging around or is still hanging around now, and and the new covenant is gradually taking over, or there's there's no mixed covenant stuff. There's no, we were talking about pizza last week, there's no combination here. (laughs) (laughs) It's just the new covenant. And it replaced the old one. And we, as non-Jewish people, along with Jewish people, have all been invited into this covenant. And what is the covenant? The covenant essentially is Christ. God said in Isaiah, I will give you as a covenant for the people. So when we talk about the covenant, ultimately we're really talking about the person of Jesus Christ. We're in him. We're in that covenant. And this is a this is a covenant that is not like the first one. We'll get to this passage later, but in Hebrews chapter 8, God said that, you know, he would introduce a a new covenant, and it would not be like the one that was given to your fathers who came out of Egypt with Moses and and that whole crew, that this would not be like that covenant. So we got to keep that in mind. And and with that in mind, I I think, Joel, the the other thing I want to point out before we look at a few scriptures here, and maybe we can start in Hebrews 7, for example, the other thing I'd like to point out, because I always sort of pictured myself in covenant with God, and some of that came from the the teaching that I was getting. But I would like to encourage you to the place where we begin to realize that you and I, God did not make this covenant with us. And that's the beauty of it. So you see, in spite of ourselves, there's, there's no way that this covenant is going to be broken. There's no way this covenant is going to fail. There's no way we're going to be able to forfeit the covenant because God didn't make it directly with us. The reason we are in the covenant is because the covenant was made between God and God, God and himself, God the Father and God the Son. The covenant was between them. Jesus was the fulfiller of this deal. And so that's also good news for us, kind of takes the pressure off, gives us a chance to rest and relax and not be concerned about blowing 
an opportunity with the covenant. Uh, you know, now under the old covenant, it was made with the people, and they failed. They failed with that covenant. There was nothing wrong with the covenant, but the people were not able to keep it. Yeah, that's Hebrews 8.8, 8, uh, you know, finding fault with them. And you see, that was the problem with the old covenant. It was a covenant with God and the people. God, of course, is not a covenant breaker. He doesn't lie. He will never break a covenant. But the problem with that old covenant was that the people did break it. They said they would keep it. <laughs> they said, we will do everything in the law. They said they would do it, but of course they didn't. And so God found fault with them, and that's why this new covenant was needed. God always knew that this new covenant would be needed, but that old covenant was given in part uh, to show them that they couldn't do that uh, and to bring them to this understanding that they needed something else. You know, here in Hebrews 7, I'm actually going to look at a few different places here, but starting with Hebrews 7, one thing about this new covenant is that it is better. It's better than the old. That's not our wording. The writer of Hebrews says that several times. Let me start in Hebrews 7. He says, For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment. He's talking about the law. He's talking about that old covenant. If you look in the context of all that he's talking about here in Hebrews, there is an annulment of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Again, not our words, that's the words of Hebrews. We can get back to that, but I just want to point out that he writes, uh, for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. You see, you couldn't draw near to God in reality through that old covenant, but this better hope, this new covenant, is how we draw near to God. Later on, in verse 22 of 7, by so much more Jesus has become surety of a better covenant, in chapter 8, it talks about Jesus being mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. There is a theme here, as we talked about this word better. Let's see, it's chapter 9 that talks about better sacrifices with this new covenant, of course, talking about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And to see, I highlighted all these things. In my, and then one last time in Hebrews uh, 10, uh, he says, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Everything about this new covenant is better than the old. The new covenant replaces the old. Like you were saying earlier, Cap, the new covenant isn't a continuation of the old. It's not like we had the old covenant and God needed to add some stuff to it, so he put this new thing in. No, it's different. It's completely different. You can't mix the two together. They're completely different. If you try to mix them together, you get something very, very bad. Jesus talked about how you don't put new wine into old wineskins or the wineskins break. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. That is what happens when you try to mix these two covenants together. Uh, so anyway, this new covenant, so much better. And uh, the writer of Hebrews had said, there is an annulling of the former covenant because of its weakness and unprofitableness. And that weakness and unprofitableness was because it was dependent upon us and our works. That wouldn't do. Yeah, and, and uh, NASB says weakness and uselessness. Because that former commandment, that's why it was set aside. That's why it had to come to an end. It was weak. It was useless. The law made nothing perfect, as you said. And then they, I'm so glad you said that. These aren't our words. You know, if we were just talking off the cuff without telling you that we're reading from the book of Hebrews here, um, you might think we were making this stuff up. What do you mean the law, the commandments are weak and useless? Oh, that's heresy, you know? We've been accused of such things, yes. um, but the law made nothing perfect. That's a problem. Why? Because Jesus said perfection was the requirement. <laughs> you have to be perfect, just as God was perfect. How is that going to happen? Not by keeping the law, not by trying to live more holy, not by following the commandments and falling short and having to confess all your sins and starting all over again. It wasn't because of any of that. Uh, but this new covenant brought perfection to us thanks to the work of Jesus Christ. So I got to point out, even if you already did, uh, Hebrews 7.22, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. I, I love how that blends in with all that's being said here, because Jesus became our high priest, right? 
and with him as as the the high priest it's it's different than the previous priests under the law because he was appointed with an oath or a promise but those others were uh, appointed through the law and, and priests you know they would serve for a certain number of years or until they died and then they would be replaced by other priests but not this high priest he came around and, and uh, he offered one sacrifice for all so those priests they existed in great numbers hebrews uh, 7 23 but jesus on the other hand because he continues forever holds his priesthood permanently and he's the guarantee he's the guarantee it's not you and i we are not the guarantee the choices we make in life are not the guarantee uh, and he continues to make intercession. This is such an exciting thing to look at. The other thing to point out here is that all of the priests under the law came from the tribe of Levi, the Levitical priesthood, right? You could not be a priest unless you were from the tribe of the Levites. Jesus did not come from the tribe of the Levites. He came from the tribe of Judah. And as the writer of Hebrews says here, he says that the, the law says nothing about Judah and priests. But that's where Jesus came from. So you see, if the law or any portion of it is still in effect, then Jesus is not a legitimate high priest. But because there was a change of priesthood, there was also a change of law. And that brought one to an end, the old covenant, and brought something new in, into place, something everlasting and eternal, Jesus called it, before he died. Right. Uh, and as we wrap up this week, uh, just something you said there, that the, the choices that we make in life are not the, our guarantee. We get so caught up. I'm human, just like everybody else, and I can get, when I'm in the wrong thinking, I can get caught up in thinking that the things that I've done are, are what has drawn me close to God, what is keeping me close, you know, the good things that I've done. And when I've done bad, that those things make God withdraw from me. But you see, the guarantee, the surety, our hope, this better hope that we have, is better, and it is guaranteed, and it is sure, because it's not based on what we do. This new covenant is all based upon the finished work of Jesus. God making an oath because he could swear by nobody greater. He swore by himself. And, and that is what this new covenant is based upon. Our part in this is simply to believe, to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and, and to turn from thinking that is based upon our own life. Man, there's so much good stuff to talk about when it comes to this new covenant. And so we'll talk about you know, Jesus Christ being this high priest. We'll talk about how it's about God's promise to himself. We'll talk about how Jesus Christ is this priest that couldn't have been according to the law, because like you were saying, the law said it had to come from Levi. The priest had to come through Levi, but he came from Judah. We'll talk about Melchizedek and uh, wh where all of that fits into this. So much good stuff to talk about in the coming weeks here. Keep it here on this channel, growingandgrace.org. <laughs> this has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.